Welcome back to The Coaches Show on KBPK. I'm Ryan Osborne from House Sherbeck Field, where it's all about the linebacking core and how they've done so far this season, in addition to an update from all over the Southern Division. Linebacker Chris Harmon. Chris, you know, you take a look at how the season has gone so far. Going from preseason, now done with four, the first four weeks, how would you rate yourself in your performance? Um, you know, I, I don't know if I can rate myself. I'll leave that up to my coaches uh, and, you know, people that actually watch film for a living. Um, I, uh, you know, I think, I think I'm doing, doing what I need to do. I'm doing my job. Um, but I think there's always ways that I can improve. I think that there's ways, uh, you know, we can all get better each week, and uh, that's why we're out here, you know, so. One of the interesting things that you always hear about linebackers is that they have different styles. How would you describe yours? Uh, I stop the run. Uh, I come downhill and I like I like hitting. Um, you know, I'm not the fastest on my feet, but you know, I, I get somebody in my grab and they're not going anywhere. So, when you mention stopping the run, it's really tough for the average fan to realize just how much you have to read on the field to be able to read that and stop it. Mm -hmm. What runs through your head when you're trying to process when you see that running back at the football? Um, well, I mean, it, it gets a lot easier for us, you know, because we practice every week. We know exactly what plays they're running. We know, uh, you know, what this guard likes to do. We know, you know, if somebody switches, we know what they're doing. Um, so I think the coaches make it easier for us uh, by, you know, laying it out really easy for us, getting a good game plan going. Um, and it, I, think, I think they just leave it up to us, uh, see ball, get ball. That's, that's, what, that's, that's what they tell us. So. Just a few moments ago, you mentioned, you know, guys who end up watching film for a living. But we know that, just like you mentioned, they bring you guys into the film room, mm -hmm. break everything down. Yep. How do those film sessions really help you? You're not just an athlete, but you're also a student athlete who has to juggle athletics yep. and academia. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, in those film rooms, uh, a lot of a lot of constructive criticism going on. You know, um, they they tell us how it is, uh, and we have to respond in the best way and try to improve. Uh, you know, on ourselves, and uh, you know, pick our teammates up, and maybe tell our teammates, hey, maybe this is how you do it. Uh, try it this way, you know, and that's what we're out here practicing for. Um, it's just trying to improve every week and, uh, you know, get better. To this point, what has been the biggest piece of advice that you have received that's really helped you at Fullerton? Um, I think uh, old linebacker used to go here, Gil Vasquez. Shout mm -hmm. out Gil. Uh, you know, he, he really told me that, you know, it's just you got to work hard every day and uh, good things will come. You know, it's not uh, something that just happens overnight. Uh, it's my second year here. So um, I'm lucky enough to be surrounded by great coaches and great teammates. Um, that have really, you know, pushed me to, to just keep on getting better every day. And that's, uh, that's the advice I've gotten just day by day, step by step. It's, not, it's, a, it's a marathon, not a sprint. So. Well, speaking of day by day, we'll see you on Saturday. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, very, you much. very much. Appreciate that. We're talking with Biso right now. And Biso, when you take a look at so far the first four weeks of the season, you know, just a few moments ago we talked with Chris and he mentioned that he doesn't want to necessarily rate himself and his performance, let the coaches do that for him. When I flip it to your side, though, you take a look at how the last game went against Mount San Jacinto. First half, not necessarily what we're used to from you guys, but it changed in the second half. What did change? Um, we came with a game plan to the second half, you know, uh, to, you know, just change what we were doing. Like, you know, our coaches, they, they talked to us and told us what we were, our mistakes, what we were doing and how we were supposed to fix that. And, you know, we just followed what they told us and it worked out. A couple weeks prior, you yourself had a great game here at Fullerton. And what was one of the biggest things that allowed you to have that success against East LA? Uh, like I said before, you know, our coaches, like, they, they make things easy. Like, they're in the film room studying and telling, telling us exactly what we need to do 
So it's just, it's just they just leave it to us to go make the plays. And that's all I can say, really. We asked Chris, how would you describe your style in the linebacking core? Um, Let's flip it to you. I'd say I'm a fast athletic linebacker, you know, that's, you know, that'll go see, go to the bar and, you know, make plays and stuff like that. So. A lot of guys with your athleticism, you see a lot growing up, they're trained to be more that in-between person between linebacker, defensive back. Did you have that same type of background or more just committed to the linebacker? Yes, sir, I did. Uh, I was actually a defensive back before. So, you know, it kind of helped me, you know, uh, with the athleticism that, you know, I'm at with linebacker now. So. When you switch from defensive back to linebacker, what is the biggest change that you have to go through? Um, I definitely say the the, the, the line, you know, you have to deal with them. Um, you have to feel the, the run more, so that's, that's a little harder, but, you know, it was, it was good, you know, it was a good change. At Fullerton College and on SportsNetUSA.net, we get a lot of people watching from all over the country. When you see that you yourself have that support and people watching you back home, mm -hmm. what's that mean for you? Uh, it means a lot, you know, it, it motivates me. It makes me want to play better and keep on doing what I'm doing. Coming up against Southwestern, one of the biggest things that we talked with Chris about just a few moments ago is that film room. When you go into the film room, seeing how college, the college level breaks things down, how does that change or help you when you're going through your progressions? Um, it helps me a lot. Like, they really get down to the really, like, real minute details. So, you know, like, the simple things, like, like, uh, reads, like, keys, like, things that they do, like standing up and stuff like that, like the little things, they really matter, so it helps. Because you can tell, like, game day, when you see those things, it helps you know what, what's, what's coming next. So, it helps a lot. Awesome, we'll see you on Saturday, we Thanks. appreciate it. And we want to thank Bisa for joining us on The Coaches Show this week, as we're highlighting the linebackers. Before we get to our final one with Jeremiah, we want to give you a quick update on what these guys have done statistically to this point. One, two, three, the linebackers rank in total tackles, leading the Fullerton College Hornets. 26, 22, and 19 for Jeremiah, Biso, and Chris Harm. 6.5, 5.5, 4.8 tackles per game. They're looking fantastic, and as a core, they have a combined two and a half sacks, in addition to 10 tackles for loss, one fumble recovery, and two interceptions to add in to five broken up passes. These are guys that are leading Fullerton College and are one of the best linebacking trios that we've seen in recent Fullerton College memory. Perhaps you even have to go back to those championship seasons in 16 and 17 to kind of start to get that comparison with how good these three are. Now we're going to bring it back over to Jeremiah, but that's very quickly the rundown of what these three guys have done and they're continuing to lead Fullerton and keep them in games on the defensive side of the football. We're talking with Jeremiah McNeely, and Jeremiah, you know, just a few moments ago, we talked yeah. with Chris, we talked with Biso. Now, we get the entire linebacking core. How do you guys keep each other accountable when you're out on the field? Honestly, we just gotta, we just like to dominate. We just like to, we just like to push each other. As starters, we have to go hard to teach everybody behind us. When you mentioned teaching everyone behind you, you know, knowing that you guys have a lot of experience, not just this year, but also last year, yes, how are you able to take that experience and help the guys who are just brand new to the college game? Honestly, it's just like teaching them what we've learned from the coaches from previous years. Honestly, teaching them the little things. It's all about the little things that you got to teach the younger guys. You talk about those little things. What's one little thing that you've been able to say, hey, you know what, this has helped me from last year to this year? Honestly, it's moves you have to work moves when it comes to alignment if see me i'm a smaller type linebacker but i'm a speed guy you have to work moves to get past the linebackers to get to your spot yes, sir. it's interesting you mentioned the the speed how did the speed surprise you when you go from that high school level up to college um it's just everybody's just moving like you got to be on your high horse everybody's just moving and everybody's just trying to get a scholarship everybody's playing for something so you got to move and react going back to that canyons matchup the linebacking core personally what we thought on the broadcast, you guys had an excellent day and really kept Fullerton in it, especially in that first half where things on the offensive side weren't necessarily as fine-tuned as you see in the next couple weeks after. Yes, sir. Linebacking core against Canyons, what gave you guys that success? Honestly, it was just we got to fight. We got to find something to, to win the game. We just got to go hard. Just go hard all the time. That's what I would say. When you're looking at this matchup coming up against Southwestern, you know, we were talking about film just a few moments ago with Biso with Chris as well. When you look at a Southwestern team that you're going to have to go on the road to face, 
What's one thing that you guys are looking for linebacking wise? Honestly, we just gotta just read and react. Just do what the coaches tell us. Just read and react and dominate and go from there. Awesome. Well, thank yes, you sir. very much. We yes, appreciate sir. you. Yes, sir. So just a few moments ago, you heard from the linebacking core for Fullerton College. And one of the interesting things about the linebacking core is when we came out here during the preseason, we got to talk to the coaching staff, not just from the linebacking core, but also Brian Crooks. We talked to the defensive line, just everyone getting a different perspective on what they see from the three starting linebackers from Fullerton College. And what we really heard is that this was a group from Fullerton that was very high on football IQ. Each one of them does one thing differently that allows for them to complement each other and keep Fullerton College in football games. We saw it last year, especially in that Mount Sac game for Fullerton, where they ended up getting a win in round one of the playoffs. And now you see it really transform this team in the first four weeks of the Fullerton College season in 2023. That Canyons matchup, which we mentioned against, or which we mentioned to Jeremiah McNeely, one thing that the linebacking core did is they, plain and simple, kept Fullerton in the game in the first half of play. And after that, Fullerton was able to cruise because the linebacking core helped set the tone for this Fullerton College defense. This Saturday, it's Southwestern. Fullerton is going to take a trip down south and face the Jaguars. That will be a 6 p.m. start. So you can stay with KBPK to keep up to date with all things Fullerton College football, but also don't forget to tune into the game on Saturday at 6 p.m. We want to thank everyone from the Fullerton College football team specifically. We want to thank Biso, we want to thank Chris, and we also want to thank Jeremiah. I'm Ryan Osborne. You've been watching The Coaches Show on KBPK.